Hi, you're watching Up New X, and this is my video talking about two Chinese dramas that are going on right now on both satellite television and web platforms. And I'm making this video basically saying that unless you have very specific personal reasons why you want to check out these two dramas, I suggest don't click them open. You definitely have better things to do in your life that will benefit you more. These two dramas being Gong Su, previously named Gong Su Jingying Prosecution Elite, that's been aired on Tencent and ITE and satellite televisions, and then Shu Nian in later years, that's been aired on satellite television and ITE. I've watched both dramas by the episode count 10, and I decided to quit both of them. These two dramas are by no means bad dramas. If we set the standard of a drama being bad at something better than <laughs> hold on gen z gen z is not only bad it's ridiculous these two dramas are definitely better they are the type of unnecessary dramas in my opinion and it probably wouldn't provide you with any entertainment value that you check out the drama for so let me divide and conquer let's first talk about the didi reba tong da wei led gong su and then li hao lei wang ou tang yixin and many other people led shu nian gong su previously known as gong su jing right now in china it's just called gong su literally means public prosecution this is a 40 episodes drama i watched this drama when it airs on the first day and i followed it as it updates daily within its producer uh, catalog you can see that there's actually supreme prosecution of china so it is a pufa television literally meaning popularization of law drama it has a task on itself that's why it goes on satellite television is to help the public get better idea of what is the procedure of certain cases, how law works, what are the differences between the court, the police, and the prosecution, and what are rampant going on right now in China, which this drama mostly focuses on fraud. So this drama in its function is really designed to be something that shows up at your eight o'clock on your television and remind the elderly people in your family. If something similar happens, don't believe in it. Don't send money to people you don't know and don't fall into those traps. That's really the function and purpose of making such a drama. Upon knowing that, you kind of have an expectation of what quality this drama would be and what type of plot almost has to happen in the drama. And then when you watch it, oh, it will do that exactly as you expect. As a contemporary drama production, it has a very standard overall production quality. I don't think they put money in designing anything that has, say, a coherent style style that has its own flair, just making it work and get all the lines spoken and the plot working. The good thing about it is it's pretty realistic. It doesn't beautify anybody. It's very realistic lighting, no skin smoothing, often very bad lighting in terms of not polishing it. You can see a lot of shots where it's almost just lit by we make the sink bright enough for exposure and done. There's no thinking about how we design this into flatter the actors a little bit more without obviously overdoing it. There's very little effort put into make the drama look high-end. So often actors look pretty um, selfie with the default iPhone front-facing camera. <laughs> that kind of look. So in the look department, even though it's led by pretty Dili Ruba, it's just like not gonna be super visually <laughs> pleasing. Then in terms of the plot itself, because it's so heavy on let's just bring in all the cases, all the things that can happen in real life so that people get warned, it has that purpose and task on it, it definitely preaches a little bit too much. Whenever it comes to a court proceeding or it comes to a interrogation of suspect with the police and with the prosecutor, you see a huge amount of lines spoken so that the audiences and the general public can see the exact wording that's according to law has to happen and what different types of rights you have or if you admit to your crime in this way or that way, what are the different punishments that may end up on you? They really go into detail about all those things. It's almost like verbatim written from some kind of standard script so that people who has never been in the court case would actually get an idea about prosecution, court, police, how all these things work. But these things are not necessarily useful for dramatic storytelling. Therefore, the drama becomes very burdened and overloaded with these things that as a story, it gets dragged out. It becomes too redundant with information, not related to the plot itself. It's quite tasking actually on all the actors because they have to remember so many words and lines and speak 
clearly with dictation so that the audiences can hear it well. 迪丽热巴、佟大为、尤静茹 these actors all do a very good job at doing that. But it makes the drama as a plot thing very boring and sometimes just make you zone out. And the drama starts with a rather exciting, almost like a spy. Novel beginning, and that's the only excitement you're gonna get. Once that plot passes, not even one moment that's that exciting has happened since then. The dilemma for a drama reviewer is: I totally see the purpose of such productions, and I think it needs to exist. But as a drama, hell, it's so boring. In this case, I really cannot blame my lack of enthusiasm <laughs> on any of the specific actors. I said this is Dili Robas. Transition drama into the serious drama land, and I mean, for the drama's purpose, she's doing a good enough job. It's just the story itself, how it's written. The purpose of it is not lending to any drama lovers to actually watch it as a dramatic narrative that's interesting, engaging, page turner, plot heavy. No, no, none of that. Okay, at least that's the. First ten episodes. Okay, I don't know what happens later. I don't really want to waste my life <laughs> on it. This drama also almost don't have any emotional romantic line. You can see that there are a couple of men of interest in Dili Rebas female lead character's life. I don't know if she's gonna have a significant line in that later, but so far they're all just like. Just about there, but it's like not getting to any milestone, and you can't quite tell which one would really be the one. If they do have one, maybe it's just not gonna happen throughout the whole thing. Like I said, Puva is the first goal of this drama. Most people probably would come into this drama because of Didi Ruba is well known. You want to check out her contemporary and more serious drama, then probably it's not gonna make you very happy about it. I've told you what it feels like. Make up your mind about whether you want to invest your life in that. Then the next one. Shunian. It airs on satellite television and also ITE, and also being updated at a really weird pacing. But anyway, I've watched ten episodes of it. It is a drama based on an existing novel, and it had gone through actually a couple of really <laughs> unfortunate events. First, this drama is. Led by Hao Lei, Wang Ou, Tang Yixing, three very main female roles in this drama. But then the other people are also very important to have a lot of screen time, including Liu Yijun, Pang Hanchen, Song Dandan, Wang Yanling, and it's a family story. We go to the Ni family. The eldest is the grandmother. She's suffering from early stage of Alzheimer. Then in the middle age. Pack. You have the eldest brother, the second brother, and the youngest daughter of this family.、And、the eldest son marries to Song Dandan's role, and they're the eldest sort of subfamily in the family. And their son is Wang Yanling, and Wang Yanling marries Tang Yixing. The second son, played by Liu Yijun, marries Hao Lei, and they're suffering from marriage problem, midlife crisis, and they have a teenager son. And the youngest daughter is not married. She works at the television station, played by Wang Ou, and she's already considered a little bit old in her thirties, still not married, and then. Younger guy, older woman situation with her relationship with the younger guy. Oh, and forgot to mention the eldest son family with Song Dandan and Wang Yanling. That story is mostly focused on the married in to the family daughter-in-law played by Tang Yixing and their conflict between two generations.、Uh, so after I've told you that. The first thing you should think about is, oh, what a mess! It's a big family, three different subfamilies. They each have archetypical problems. Woman who don't get married at the age where the society expects you to get married and getting into a relationship with a younger guy, and then middle life crisis of wanting to divorce after you've married. For twenty years or something, and then you have a daughter-in-law, and there's this constant battle between having kids or not, or like you know buying houses or not.、Uh, and then you have a grandmother who is suffering from early stage Alzheimer's. So this story is very stressful. <laughs> That's what I. Will say about it from episode one, from first moment. It's stressful. Every plot is stressful. If you don't want that, don't watch this drama. For this type of drama, even when it has a lot of stressful plot, sometimes it can be still very good and very touching, very well written, highly engaging. We've seen that type of drama. This is not one of them. It doesn't deliver that. Good part of this type of drama, and it's filled with stress of the bad part of this type of drama. Also, this drama is very unfortunate. I think it should have gone live actually back in 21. But one of the supporting role in the original footage is an idol who had a 
crash happening, house collapsing. Not very well known. I believe 99% of my channel viewer don't even know this person. He's not famous at all, but he did something stupid on internet that just made him like kind of soft disappeared and banned from internet. Because of that, they had to face swap his role and reshoot certain footages when it cannot be face swapped with the actor Pang Hanchen. So originally, Wang O is paired up with a much younger guy, the older woman, younger guy situation. But then that guy is flopped. <laughs> so they had to redo all his plot and that postponed the release date for a whole year until 23 that this drama comes out. In the relationship between Wang O and Pang Hanchen's character, at least with the first 10 episodes I've watched, it doesn't quite work. Maybe it is to do with that they had to get somebody to save the day and reshoot in this sense is very weird. Face swapping, I can't imagine how bad it can get. So that may be one reason that impacted at least that subplot line in the whole big thing. But if we totally disregard the Wang O and Pang Hanchen storyline, just looking at the second son and the eldest son, their family story. Oh, my blood pressure, my blood pressure. Oh, and, and stress level and psychological pain just like keeps shooting up as I was watching it. There's only stress and negative <laughs> vibe I get from watching this drama. And I am surprised that I stayed until episode 10. Oh, and there's this one character who is with the Pang Hanchen Ro, his aunt, but younger than him, family generation thing. She is just so random. She's injected into the story for no good reason. And the actress is bad at acting and doesn't go with anything. And every time she shows up, I'm confused about why she's in the story. And she happens to have a lot of screen time somehow. So this is a overall very messy drama. And I think when it went on satellite television, after a few days, it didn't perform at all. It was so bad that they had to pause the drama for a while and rescheduling it very unfortunate thing, but you can't blame television stations. Really, it's not working, this drama. Everything of this drama is not working. Although it has so many very good actors, somehow it's just all a mess. So for prosecution in lead, and in later years, I cannot see any reasonable reason that I would recommend these two dramas to anybody. I've told you my reasons, and if you still want to check out for your personal reasons, totally fine. But I doubt anybody would have patience watching through these two. And right now, as I'm making this video at the beginning of June 2023, there really isn't a super good drama going on right now in Chinese drama land. The thing is, if there is suddenly a Kuang Biao knockout drama or a three body showing up, oh, you're gonna hear it from everywhere. Right now, I'm not hearing anything, so Mm -hmm. I made this video basically to help you narrowing down your targets when you're selecting dramas, saving your time. Hope that's useful. Thank you for watching Avenue X. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.